I'm just going to be frank with you. Um, investing in sports cards and things that you may not really enjoy that much can ruin your life. It can be very addicting. There is a video on YouTube called The Dark Side of Investing in Basketball Cards. Now, investing, the term investing, assumes that you are trying to make more money than you put in. So it's not called sports card in collector, it's called sports card investor, right? Investor, it's called market mover and you pay a monthly fee. The idea of investing in sports cards isn't new. It's not something that they discovered like 10 years ago. It always existed, but not to this level of professionalism where you have quote software to track your investments and also give you, I guess, investment advice financial advice which may or may not be legal and then has shifted you can see sports card investor has shifted but he's still called sports card investor until he changes his name it's still called sports card investor that's his branding that's his website that's everything so when you're saying i i'm a sports card investor um you have to be very careful what you say because you have investor at the end and people can assume that is financial information there's not you know, there's a lot of debates on you know FTX and influencers and Graham Stefan, you know financial YouTube. There's a lot of discussion on like what is an influencer supposed to be responsible for when it's get, when they're giving advice, uh, especially of the financial nature, which isn't typical. Um, I mean, it's like almost giving legal advice, right? You got to be very careful because there's no way that your financial or legal advice can be true for everybody watching the video. It's even if it's very generic, even if it's very vague, if it's generic and vague, it's less and less useful, right? Buy cards. Okay, cool. That's a very good, you know, that's completely useless, but it is the most vague and kind of the most defendable position financially. But then when you say buy Will Greer, yes, it's very useful information because you're telling people to buy this certain player, maybe his rookie cards, right? but then it's probably not a good investment for everybody even if will greer becomes joe montana or tom brady um the le the length that it takes him to become that to whether or not you know you can hold on to the card at the time do you need a liquidate uh, all these questions um depend on who you are as an individual and therefore it doesn't make sense for everyone to buy will greer even if he is in 20 years going to be the next tom brady and that's best case scenario. Worst case scenario, Will Greer is Will Greer and he's out of the league already. And in that case, then that was financial advice that was very bad for everybody who took it, <laughs> not just uh, the ones that who couldn't hold on. So back to um, kind of why I'm making this video. Do not invest in stuff that you don't understand. I think when, you know, it's basically just straight up gambling and it's okay to be gamble, it's okay to open packs, join box breaks, join a whatnot break with the backyard boys once in a while. But don't for a second think it's investment. The reason that people get in trouble is they say, oh, hey, it's investment, so I can put more money into it than I normally would. It's like when you go to a casino and you say, well, you know, I'm such a good player at poker at the casino, it's really an investment. I'm gonna make more money. That type of mindset is very different than I'm going to the casino and here's my limit and if I hit it, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to have as much fun as I can. That is the correct mindset when you enter the casino, not that you can invest. So I think um, the reason that these investors, they tell you, oh, hey, this is a true investment. You can make a lot of money from this investment, market movers, investor, investment, investment, invest same with alpha investments, right? Investments that you can look at magic cards as an investment. Um, the reason they have investment in their name and alpha is actually a financial term. So, the, and then they say, oh, I have a financial background like Rudy Chan does or Jeff, you know, sports card investor, not collector, investor, is because then you spend more money. Many times money that you shouldn't spend that you wouldn't spend. If you call it sports card gambling, if that's what the channel was called, sports card gambling, then yeah, people would be like, okay, well, they would spend less money gambling because it's called gambling, right? So you would spend more money in your 401. Oh, tip, you should, okay, you should uh, feel more compelled to spend money on your 401k, which is an investment, than buying lottery tickets, which is gambling. So if you identify something as gambling, 
like, you know, let's say box breaking, opening a box. If, if you view that as investment, you might say, you know what, I lost $700 today. I see this in backyard breaks all the time. Let me throw in another 700. Oh, I lost again. Let me put another, it, it's very dangerous when you think that this is an investable opportunity, mainly because it's A, not an investment, uh, in my opinion, and B, you put more, much more money in it than if you feel like it's just a, a night out at the casino. I lost money at the casino, okay, that's fine. But when you lose money investing in sports cards that you thought would go up in price, that's where I have a difficulty because you're, you're trying to get people to pay for a monthly services or there's always a coaching plan. A lot of these investors have coaching plans where they coach you how to invest in sports card, which is ludicrous, right? But they do, um, they do. They have patrons and you pay monthly. Again, the, the whole thing is a monthly something, it's a monthly Discord channel, a monthly newsletter, a monthly, um, app like market movers whatever you're paying monthly into you're paying to do because you want the inside track and you feel like it's okay to pay that much of money because it's an investment you're investing in your future when in fact you're just investing in paper cards again great hobby like here here's the dichotomy right fun hobby fun times it is i i think it's gambling more or less Fanatics thinks it's gambling. I just watched the Nelk interview on Michael Rubin, the head of Fanatics, and they have a sports book. I mean, they understand what it is. They understand that a lot of people gamble in sports. They love gambling. And sports cards can be considered a type of gambling. You put money into your player, hope they win the Super Bowl. They win the Super Bowl, card price goes up. I mean, it's really that simple. It can't be more simple than that. Uh, now, should it be called an investment? No. Um, I, I think it has proven the point with the collapse of these prices and you know people can say, oh, the prices are back, the prices, until Sasha T comes back, he was the biggest investment YouTuber at the time when the card market was booming, his $500,000 $500, Charizard deal. Um, until he comes back, he hasn't made a, a video in a long time and he's being paid by whatnot of all, play, of all people. And he's still not making a video because he's probably had to find a new job. So if you ask Sasha T, is this an investment? He probably said, nah, man. Anyway, hi guys.